Hi, Judy from Witch Pierce Craft. Welcome to this week's video, episode 49 on my yarn adventures. Well, it's probably been a bit longer than a week that I've shown you anything I've made. I've really been getting into August yarn bingo, so I'll share those finished objects with you. Firstly, um, because there are a lot of squares on there that I really liked. So first of all, my Christmas present, my fox tea cozy. It's a free knitted pattern. Um, I, if I was to knit this again, I would make some changes to this pattern. I'm not 100% happy with it, but it's for a friend and they like it. They like it so much they want me to try and make a fox beanie, which is a bit of a challenge, but I have to give that a go. I knitted that in um, Carnival 8-ply, a panda yarn that we get over here. Years and years ago, um, Carnival yarn was really harsh, very stiff, but this is lovely and soft, and probably because it's supplied by Panda now. This was yarn I got in my yarn swap from Libby. I really love this colour, and this yarn is beautiful to work with. It does not split. I would knit or crochet with it again in a heartbeat. I love it. So that was my Christmas gift to a friend on Yarn Bingo. For more years than I care to remember, I can't remember the last time I made baby booties, probably longer than seven years ago, and I made a set of baby booties. They have like a bobble stitch. It sort of looks hot pink on there, but it's actually a rose pink. Bow's coming undone on that one. Um, it's out of a, a knitting pattern book I've had for years. I actually... They look like they're really long, but they sort of square off like that, <laughs> I think. But yeah, I'm thinking of trying to make a baby hat to match with my own pattern. I'm going to give that some thought and give it away as a gift. So they're my baby booties. And something I made ages ago for a lady out of scrap yarn who wanted hippie colours was a hanging plastic bag holder. Ta -da! This one's made out of 12 ply scraps that I've had for absolutely ages. I crocheted a loop that gathers it up and around the bottom I put a hair tie and crocheted around it to give it stretch. And that was on Yarn Bingo. We call them bag snakes over here. Um, the lady that I made it for didn't want it for plastic bags. She wanted it for... Um, like in packets of Tim Tams especially, you get like the plastic tray. She wanted to put her hard plastics in it and then empty it into the recycling because we can actually recycle those. So, yeah, I remember it had basically black with lots of hippie colours. She liked it. And, yeah, she bought that off me ages ago, probably two years ago. So it was nice making another one. Haven't made one for a while. Um, then... I think I told you, I'm not even sure if I showed you. I look back at my videos, I couldn't see it. I was trying out the drunken granny stitch blanket, the baby blanket on Secret Yarnery, and I made the wheelchair blanket. It's finished now. I really like this drunken granny stitch, and I think it's turned out really well. This is Marvel 12 ply, a spotlight yarn we get here. Um, I bought absolutely heaps in this colour. This is my second blanket, but I finally finished it all. They threw this colour out for some reason, this variegated purpley blues. I think it was like $1.50 a ball. That's why I bought it quite a bit. I didn't buy it all. I never buy all. I always leave someone, some for someone else. But yeah, that's a wheelchair blanket I've made for a lady who asked, for her brother. And I think I mentioned I was going to try doing another shawl. And I have made, and I really like it, and it's for me now, this virus shawl. I was going to improve my virus, which I did. And I'm actually going to wear it like that when I go overseas in a, less than a week's time. I'm going to tie it and wear it as a cowl. So this is my second mini virus shawl I've made. And today, just when I left work, I went to the supermarket in the city and blow me down, there's the lady that bought my first one and she's wearing it. She bought it from me at the markets. It was in graceful green. 
She's Japanese. She loves it. She saw me straight away and said, people want to know where I got it. So I might have to make some more for the markets. But yeah, it looked really good on her. I felt really proud. She was wearing my shawl out and about. So that's really nice to know that your stuff is appreciated. Okay, I was, I am doing the Unravel Mitten Squares and I did get a little behind. But mainly because I got annoyed and it's probably just me, this one, this starry one. It drove me insane. I originally started it in dark purple. It kept going out of shape. In the end, I had to go back to basics and use stitch markers at the end of each row and count every row. I was so glad to finish that square. And then I went on to number 14, which was like this corner to corner square. I used the purple up that I'd been trying on. I think I have about one to go to catch up again, number 15, before 16 comes out. It could be out already. So they were my Unravel Mitten Squares. The only thing with my virus shawl, it was made with shawl in a ball, colour unicorn. I got a bad ball. I've had it be, I like shawl in the ball. I've never had issues. This is my first attempt because that's what was coming out and I could not work with that. Someone in their wisdom at the factory tied both ends together, the start and the finish. I had to find that and unknot it and then I started it and then this came out. So I ended up thinking, oh, that's a mess, gave up and continued on. After this bit, everything was fine. But yeah, you do get a bad ball of yarn now and again. And it doesn't necessarily mean they're all bad because I really like shawl and the ball. I forgot about that. That was sitting there. So what else? Acquisitions. Did I break my yarn band? Yes, I'm a naughty girl. I was in Big W where we get the Carnival Panda shopping for something and I always check their very small yarn aisle out. It's getting smaller by the way. And they had a yarn on sale, one colour only, and I have a baby blanket pattern that I want to knit. And for some reason, I really like the colour. So I bought six balls of Peyton's. Big Boy 8 Ply in this green. It has a colour number. It's lovely and soft. It's perfect for the pattern. And a friend said she wanted like a real hip trendy blanket for the baby boy that they're expecting. And I think she'll like this. And I have actually started it on my Aldi needles. I've started it because... When I go overseas next week, I I'll be showing you probably hopefully in a brief video what I'll be taking. But this will be my project in my suitcase. I'll be taking three projects. The difficult one, because it's quite a difficult pattern and I can't take knitting needles on an aeroplane. I can take crochet hooks. So there you have it. I broke my band. Because it's normally $6 a ball and they threw this one colour out for $3 a ball. 50% off. Who could resist? And it's perfect for my pattern. It knits beautifully. So that was my acquisitions besides some safety eyes. I've been trying to get my amigurumi on and make the wild animal for yarn bingo. I watch all these people make amazing amigurumi. No catchy name. Crystal of crystals crocheting stuff. Oh, look, the head went fine, but I think I have done the ears about six times. I'm not even onto the body yet, but hopefully before I leave, I'll have my wild animal finished for yarn bingo. I intend to conquer those ears this weekend. Um, what else have I... Oh, I think I mentioned in my last video or somewhere along the line... I was really excited about going to Crafts Alive, which is a three-day craft festival that started last year. And I was overseas last year when it was here and it was supposed to be amazing. You know, you bought your tickets, you got a little gift bag, heaps of things to see and do. 
and my family bought me tickets to multiple days for my birthday so I had tickets and I went along well my gift bag was a map and a reel of cotton just one reel of cotton that's what you got and a map and a timetable of the classes um, I met some of the ladies from Ravelry there um, there was Ulia and a lady from Western Australia, my own home state, who had contacted Ravelry Group and wanted to meet up. Um, we were really disappointed. We walked around. There was one lady selling um, merino wool yarn in two-ply. What would I describe two-ply? Super light, super fingering lightweight yarn. Um, for the amount of yardage, incredibly expensive. She had a pattern for a scarf that was just photocopied. She wanted $7.50 for this very plain pattern scarf. And that was the only knitting thing. Everything was quilting, a lot of quilting, and patchwork and a bit of scrapbooking. Nothing else. I did take some photos of the um, Crafts Alive of some of the beautiful quilts. I'm not a quilter. We ran into Adrian, who owns the craft shop across the road from work for me, Ken's Create. He orders stuff in from Clover for me all the time. They, they're really great there. Um, he was pointing out a quilt and said, you could do that. And I went, no, I don't think so. I'm not that good. And he said, no, oh, it's really easy. I think he was trying. But, yeah, he said a lot of quilting. When I asked one of the organisers, why no wool or yarn stalls or he said to me it's too hot up here no one knits and I said well you need to tell the hundreds of ladies on the tablelands and the hundreds or so ladies in Cairns that knit and crochet that because that's why they're not here the ladies from the CWA the Country Women's Association Queensland Country Women's that were there they had some knitted stuff, some beautiful knitted tea cozies, different stuff, donation tin you could donate to. And one of the ladies was knitting with what I thought was Angora goat hair. But no, it was Samoy dog hair, white, pure white. The lady had shaved and collected her dog's hair, had it clean, spun, and she wanted a beanie and a scarf knitting it out of it. And the beanie was beautiful and the scarf was nearly finished because she was picking it up at the end of Crafts Alive. And the lady at CWA was doing it for her. And she said, the first time she has ever knitted with dog hair. But, oh, it was beautiful. And the ladies at the CWA were really lovely. Their tea cozies, if I ever want to enter one in a competition, must be double knit or lined with like so the fox has to be lined with orange you have to do two basically that's their rules and that's a very old rule from way back but yeah they were lovely they made the day sitting with Ulia and Milan from WA she was knitting she had entered um, a baby layette like the jacket the booties the shawl in the Perth Royal Show which is like a huge craft place, a craft fair, everything, agriculture. Um, we used to go there all the time when we lived there and she won and it was unlike ours. It, it was a Peyton's pack worth $150 worth and it had this yarn. It was beautiful and she was knitting this thing for her daughter in cable stitch. So it was lovely. I enjoyed that. We had coffee, wandered, chatted. That was really nice. So I'll put some photos of the craft fair at the end, show you what was there. Um, yeah, really disappointed. Would I go next year? Um, unless I'll be checking out the stall sites, see if any of them list yarn. I'm not sure I'd waste my time again. Uh, but yeah, who knows? Hopefully they'll get some feedback that we do actually knit and crochet up here. Just because it's the tropics doesn't mean it's too hot. We can do it in the air conditioning. So, guys, that's my finished objects for the week. Yes, I've got some whips on the go. I'm not great at showing whips because sometimes I can change my mind. Um, it's Thursday here in Australia and I fly out for the UK next Wednesday. Fingers crossed there are no more dramas at Hong Kong Airport. 
because I have a four hour layover at Hong Kong. Um, if you haven't heard about the protesting, get on YouTube or msn.com news. You'll see what happened at the airport. Yes, it was very stressful worrying whether I should change flights or not and go through Singapore, but it seems to have settled down. So hopefully I'll do a brief video, show you what projects I'm going to be doing on the plane. It's seven hours to Hong Kong. I think it's just under or just over 14 hours to the UK after a four hour layover in Hong Kong. It's a long way, but I'm looking forward to seeing my eldest son. So thanks for watching. Oh, there is one thing I wanted to ask. YouTube etiquette. I don't know how I feel. I haven't formed an opinion, but I'd like you guys to comment and leave your opinion and let me know what you think. Since the trolls that attacked me about being a witch, all my comments are held for review. So I read every comment and I'll publish them even if they're just a bit critical. It doesn't bother me as long as they're not vulgar, rude, nasty. And there are a couple of guys who constantly put comments, but they just get deleted. They don't get published. They're not worth it. But recently I got a comment from a lady that was nice and she put a link to her YouTube channel, a video on her YouTube channel in the comments. I was a little surprised at that. Um, I do lots of shout outs and I've been asked by people who have sent me comments that I haven't, would you do a shout out? Not a problem. But she just made the comment and put the link. So my question to you guys is, is that acceptable YouTube etiquette to publish your channel link in a comment on someone else's channel without asking first? I don't think I'd do it. I think I'd have to ask. I don't even ask people to give me a shout out. I've I've got a list of the shout outs I've done. That's huge. And the ones I've received, it's probably about a third of what I've given out. But hey, that's the way it is. But yeah, is it polite or is it unpolite to publish your YouTube video link in the comment without asking? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Am I being a little... What would you call it? YouTube policy? Or a bit put out? I wasn't, I was just really shocked. It's never happened before. I've been asked for shout outs, but that, I just found it a little strange. So yeah, let me know in the comments below. So until next time, take care of yourself. Keep positive, keep upbeat, look after each other and have a crafty day. Bye for now.